Hey everybody, Sean from Media Assault here, and I'm going to be trying something a little bit different, actually starting something a little bit different with this video. This is going to be a countdown to Star Trek Into Darkness marathon. I'm doing this in association and I guess in cooperation with Planet Shannon TV. I'll put a link to her channel below. And uh, what we're doing, and she started this, is we're watching all 11 Star Trek feature films, one per week, counting down to the release of Star Trek Into Darkness in May of this year. And she did the math, it's 11 weeks if we start now. Um, so, uh, 11 weeks to the release of the uh, Star Trek Into Darkness film. So if we watch one Star Trek feature film per week and do a video for it, we will get through all the feature films. And uh, so, we're going to each watch and give our feelings about each one leading up to that uh, release date. And of course you have to start at the beginning and that would be Star Trek The Motion Picture. This is the Blu-ray uh, from the six film set that features all of the original cast films. And one of the reasons that I wanted to do this is because I've seen the original cast films, some of them more than once, some of them only once, but I've never seen any of the Next Generation Star Trek films, so this will give me an opportunity to do that, plus put them in context with the original cast films, and of course give me another chance to watch the 2009 reboot of the series, which of course Star Trek Into Darkness is a sequel to. So, uh, starting off with this particular film, which was released in 1979, uh, to kind of put it into perspective, I was in sixth grade when this film came out. I did see it in the theater, and that was actually the last time I watched it from beginning to end. I've seen bits and pieces of it here and there over the years, but 33 years ago was the last time I sat down and watched Star Trek The Motion Picture from beginning to end. And uh, this is not the director's cut, which was released a couple of years ago, I believe. I've never seen that, so any of my comments will be based on the original theatrical release and this Blu-ray release, which features that same cut. Um, and back then, the anticipation for this film was pretty huge. It was, it was very hyped up. Now, of course, back then, there was no internet. Uh, there was very limited entertainment outlets on TV, so most of the news that I got about this particular film was through um, magazines like Starlog or Famous Monsters of Filmland, or there was another move, another one, I believe, um, oh, I can't remember the name of the other magazine I used to read all the time, it, it went out of print a long time ago, but anyway, excuse me, um, so by the time the film came out, it, the anticipation was at a fever pitch, and everybody was expecting something along the lines of Star Wars, because at that time, Star Wars had been out for two years, there, there was no Empire Strikes Back yet, Return of the Jedi was not even thought about, um, and every studio was throwing their hat into the ring as far as coming up with these big budget sci-fi extravaganzas. You had Disney with the Black Hole, Paramount with Star Trek The Motion Picture, Fox of course already had Star Wars. Um, so, and there were, of course, tons and tons of B-movie rip-offs trying to cash in on the sci-fi craze back then. So going into the theater, I really wanted to see something great. I knew, of course, of Star Trek. Star Trek in reruns was something that I enjoyed a lot when I was growing up. Um, there was, of course, the animated series in the 70s, but everybody was clamoring for Star Trek to get back, you know, either on TV, well, basically back on TV, because no TV shows at that time had made the jump to motion pictures yet. Um, so this was going to be the, the big return. Everybody was excited, not only that it was a big science fiction film, but it was Star Trek coming back, uh, something that fans had been asking for for 10 years, at least. Um, so going into the theater... I had expectations, I had anticipation, and what I felt when I walked out was disappointment, um, boredom. <laughs> uh, I just, I really was disappointed by this film. It looked good, and I'll talk about that a little bit, but um, 
from a pacing standpoint, this film was absolutely leaden. It moved like a snail, and it was just unbearably long for somebody like me, who was in sixth grade at the time, and there was virtually no action in this film at all. And that led me to think it wasn't a very good movie. And it did the same thing for a lot of critics at the time. Although it made a lot of money for its time, and was successful enough to spawn Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan, which of course I'll be, lis I'll be listening to, be watching next week, um, it was not a criti critical success, and most people think about it kind of unkindly. Well, I sat down to watch it last night, and I actually found myself enjoying it quite a bit more than I thought I would. And I think it's because I had a new appreciation for what it was, what it was trying to do, and the fact that I could put um, the effects into perspective. Because one of the things that this movie is pretty well known for are these long camera pans over different uh, effect shots that are just slow and use there are a lot of scenes where time passes by uh, simply a shot of somebody reacting in awe to something huge and then cutting back to the camera slowly panning or you know um, uh, following something rather large for five to seven minutes and the movie's two hours and ten minutes long and there are quite a few of those types of shots, I would say at least a half an hour's worth, I'm just guessing. It just makes the movie seem really, really slow. Today, it's easy to see why they did that, because they wanted to emphasize, A, the size of these spaceships that they're showing, that previously had only been on a TV screen. Uh, and you can sort of tell that size is emphasized in this quite a bit. It's taking the compressed world of the TV show and blowing it up to full screen, or not full screen size, but widescreen size. Uh, so the sets are huge. The uh, the models, even though they're, of course, in reality small, they're made to look gigantic. So the camera will, you know, start at one end and go to the other. Um, something that Star Wars did first and, and did it a little more uh, speedily, I guess, but there's just this emphasis on making everything as epic as possible. The score is appropriately epic and majestic sounding. Everything is like, hey, this is Star Trek. It's on the screen. Be happy. And don't worry about the fact that there's no action. Well, the reason there's no action is because Star Wars was an action fantasy sci-fi type film. It had dogfighting, you know, on the Death Star, and it had, you know, the the uh, lightsaber battles and everything. But that's what it was supposed to be. It was supposed to be a throwback to the old cliffhangers of the you know the movie serials from the 1930s and 40s. Star Trek was Star Trek, which was pretty much hardcore science fiction, and this story is pretty much hardcore science fiction. Even though uh, fans of the series, and I am not a huge Trekkie by any stretch of the imagination, but uh, I am aware of the fact that this is a, effectively just a remake of an old original series episode called The Changeling, and I won't spoil it if you haven't seen it. But, uh, so, the film remained true to its Star Trek roots and wasn't trying to necessarily appeal to the Star Wars crowd. It was trying to appeal to the Star Trek crowd, but it was the Star Wars crowd who went in hungry for another big-budget epic, I think. And that's what was the flavor of the time. Being able to revisit that, it's easier to appreciate what it was trying to do. And even though it's not a great film, it's a lot better than I remembered it being. Uh, it was really nice to see the cast kind of slipping their characters back on for the first time in ten years. And um, I remember when I saw the film in the theater, I thought it was hilarious. Well, I, not hilarious, but I thought it was just kind of shocking to see that, you know, Kirk and Spock and McCoy and Scotty and Chekhov and Sulu had all aged. And now I look back on it and go, wow, they look really young <laughs> compared to what they looked like in later films. Um, because this series lasted for another 12 years. Um... 
I, I just, I really was surprised by the fact that I enjoyed this movie as much as I did. So if I had to give it a rating, I would have to give it a 7 out of 10. Um, if you would have asked me before yesterday, before watching this film, I would have given it a 3 out of 10 because I thought it was a boring, dragging, just hulk of a movie that didn't go anywhere. But I actually appreciated it for what it is, which is a science fiction story that is allowed to breathe, allowed the characters to get into their roles, and allowed just everybody to kind of reacclimate themselves to this Star Trek universe on a widescreen, big screen scale. And I don't think any other episode or entry into the original six films at the beginning of this Star Trek series were given that opportunity to do that again because this was such a resounding critical failure. The next uh, five movies moved at quite a bit brisker, brisker, more brisk pace, and uh, they were just more like extended episodes of the TV show with some action elements rather than trying to be hardcore science fiction like this was attempting to do. So I was really surprised how much more I enjoyed this than I expected. Um, the Blu-ray actually looks very, very good. There were some weird um, artifacts and film thingies on it, but uh, not scratches so much, but uh, just at times the, the picture looked odd. But uh, overall, the transfer looks pretty good. But uh, stay tuned for my next entry into this countdown to Star Trek Into Darkness, which of course will be the highly acclaimed and uh, much better received Star Trek II The Wrath of Khan with Ricardo Montalban as Khan and all the original cast members back again. And uh, like I said, do check out Shannon's channel. I'll put the link below. Uh, and get her thoughts as well. And uh, please subscribe to her channel. She does a lot of interesting stuff on her channel, um, vlogs, and she does the, the Sci-Fi Surprise series, and she does a lot of other things too. So check her out. I highly recommend her channel. So thanks for watching, everybody. Tune in for the next entry next week. And uh, as always, feel free to rate, comment, and if you haven't done so already, please subscribe. Thanks for watching.